Hi everyone, it's Zach with Palantir Research. One particular stock. You say that Palantir is a critical element in our national defense. Well, currently 22 bucks a share. Why is it so important and where do you think the stock's going? Yeah, great question. Super appropriate for this morning. Thank you for asking. So Palantir is critical to the defense because it helps with targeting, helps with logistics, helps with decision making. It integrates so many different data points that conventional sequence oriented computing can't. So to me, this is a stock that should be $50. I've been talking about it for a little while. It's taken, it's taken a little bit to get its footing, but we're about there and I think it's totally underestimated. Do you know if Palantir is in any way, shape or form part of Israel's defense technology? Because it just emerged from the weekend as being particularly good. Did Palantir help them? I, I don't know whether you know that or not. I don't. Well, I was going to say, I don't know that for a fact, but I would not be in the least surprised that it is not highly involved. Got it. This is Keats Fitzgerald's latest interview surrounding the recent geopolitical events and how it relates to Palantir. Now, first, we all heard that $50 price target, which catches everyone's attention, of course. Keith is a big bull around Palantir, and this is known, and sees them as crucial to the future of AI and in the value that they can provide, as well as being the one to disrupt big players for the industry. Now, he doesn't say an exact time frame, of course, here, but has made very rough ones in previous interviews. Now, more importantly, in my opinion from this, is his thoughts around Palantir being a critical element in our national defense for the United States. He says it helps with targeting, logistics, decision making, just to name a few, and everything that is crucial to running any defense of a country. We've seen this in their work with the army, especially in all different kinds of their programs. Then, when asked about Israel and if he knows anything for sure about their involvement, now, no one is confirming nor denying, but I'm in agreement as well that, no, it wouldn't be surprising to see Palantir being a major player as well. And I haven't spoken too much about it since when we saw the news with the Iranian drone attack and being able to showcase a successful defense there. Now, everyone is speculating on both sides who wasted more money, what were the actual goals, was it even an attack that quote-unquote wanted to even succeed by Iran, or was it to save face? I don't know. I just see it as what happened, and honestly, as more time plays out, we'll see the implications of this, even if it turns out the way either side's actors want it to play out or doesn't. But the common theme is that we're in a more disjointed and conflict-ridden world, and Pounter stands to be a participant at least in this considering their mission-driven organization is focused on protecting Western values, and you can agree or disagree even if you are a shareholder, but at least for a narrative and qualitative standpoint, Palantir can gain opportunities first in deterrence, building up our technology mode on the United States defense side so much that it may not even be worth it for adversaries to take military action and then thwart things towards diplomatic warns. Or in the case of an attack actually occurring or just active war zones and conflicts, Palantir, as mentioned by Keith, is heavily involved in logistics and targeting we've all heard before, and of course their participation in Ukraine majorly. So very uncertain times of what's to come exactly, but in my opinion, that smells like opportunity for Palantir to continue showcasing their value and performance and hopefully successfully doing so. But what are your thoughts below and I'll see you in the next video.